In this video, let's look at how I've set up my new watercolour palette for sketching. I'll explain why I needed a new one and why I've only filled one side of the pans. We can also look at the first sketch I've done with this palette. There are links to all the materials and online content in the description. I needed a new palette because I'm desperate to start sketching more outside and one of the things holding me back is the lack of a suitable palette. Which is obviously a bit of an excuse, but when you're shy about sketching in public, you can latch on to any excuse to avoid the experience. I've got this small palette, which has served me well, but it's too small. There is virtually no mixing space. I also find it difficult to pick up enough pigment from the hard cake pans. You end up digging a hole in them, damaging your brush and making it even more difficult to pick up paint. I've got this larger palette, which I thought would be good for sketching, but I'm just not getting on with it. The wells are too deep, I don't like the dished mixing areas, and when it's opened, I find it unwieldy. I'm following Liz Steele's Sketching Now courses as I get ready to sketch outside, so I've decided to try a palette more like hers, this one. She uses an Australian brand, which I haven't found in the UK. I was going to buy this one from Jackson's, which looks the same, but it was out of stock. I ended up with this one from Amazon, which I suspect may be the same as the one Jackson's are selling. The palette is sold as being able to accommodate six full pans or 12 half pans fitted into these clips. Liz crams 12 full pans into her palette, and I was pretty sure I could get 12 pans into this one by putting four in each set of the clips and squeezing an extra row between the clips. There, they just about fit. Some of them are bowing a bit, but I think this would work. The idea fails because I want to swap a couple of the full pans with half pans. These just about fit into the middle row. but these don't. They would probably fit if I took out these clips. Liz's dad removes the clips for her by drilling out the rivets. I might try this, but for now I'm going with plan B and just using the bottom of the box. It easily accommodates two rows of six pans. Now I have the opposite problem. The tension between the pans isn't going to keep them in place. So I'm going to use blue tack. Liz lays down strips to stick down the pans but I'm just going to add balls of blue tack to the bottom of each pan. I'm pretty sure these will hold. These are all the pans I need to fill. Some of the colour selections are paints I use in my main palette, and some of them are influenced by the paints Liz uses in her courses, like Potter's Pink and Monte Amiata Natural Sienna. Let's have a go at the first one. It's relatively easy filling the full pans with fresh paint, but it's trickier to be accurate with the half pans and when the tubes are emptier or the paint is a bit drier. This is the palette ready to go. I've only filled one side of the pans because I'm trying a simplified version of an idea called ramp filling, which is explained in this blog post by Jane Blundell. The idea of ramp filling is instead of having to jab into the paint and damaging the point of your brush, you can just swipe across it like this. The first sketch I did with a new palette was of the paints in the new palette. This is in the style of the colour chart sketches Liz does of her palettes. I really enjoyed using the new palette. The ramp filling makes it much easier to pick up paint. It's also helping me to be more mindful about the whole painting process. Thank you for watching. I hope this is interesting and helpful. If you sketch in watercolour outside, Please leave me a comment about what materials you use, particularly your palette.